This is part 3 of the Teardown Scripting tutorial and in this episode we'll cover input handling and interaction with objects in the world. Let's start with the scene that's quite similar to the one in the previous episode. But instead of turning the light on and off periodically, we'll use player input to control the light. To check for player input there are a number of input functions in the API. You can check for physical inputs like the left mouse button or the delete key or you can check for logical inputs such as moving forward or toggle the flashlight. To make a mod compatible with custom key bindings and gamepads, make sure to use the correct input identifier. If you for instance want to check if the player is pressing the jump key, use jump and not space. Let's start with the input down function. It will check if a specific key or button is currently held down. If we for instance combine set light enabled with input down and check the L key, the light will only be turned on as long as the L key is held down. If we instead use the input pressed function, it'll return true once only on the exact frame when the L key was pressed. Combining this with the state variable, we can toggle the light on and off for every press on the L key. What about those interactable objects we've seen in the game? They're using a reserved tag called interact. If a shape or body has that tag, the engine will consider that object interactable and display the interact notification. Let's create a light switch using a couple of shapes in the editor. We'll give the button shape two tags, a button tag to properly find it from the script and an interact tag to make it interactable. The engine will immediately recognize the button as interactable, even though nothing happens yet when trying to interact with it. If we provide a value for the interact tag, we can even make the engine display a custom message along with the interact notification. On the script side, first we need to find the button shape and we'll use the same method we learned about in the previous episode, except we're using find shape instead of find light. Now we can use a function called get player interact shape to retrieve the handle to the shape the player is currently interacting with. This function will return zero if there are no interactable shapes or bodies in range. If the handle is identical to the button shape, then we know the player is interacting with the button. Finally, we need to check if the player is pressing the interact key using the input pressed function. And we now have a functioning light switch. If we want to take this one step further, we could even change the value of the interact tag based on the current light state, so that it says turn on if it's currently turned off and vice versa. This is done with the set tag function. If you want an object to be no longer interactable, you can simply remove the interact tag using the remove tag function. In the next episode, we'll touch on a little bit of math as we go through vectors and transforms and what they're used for in teardown scripting.